Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsfari.com. Today's topic is an interesting topic from biotechnology. What do you mean by selectable marker? Hopefully you will be able to understand the definition of selectable marker, how we use selectable marker in the selection of recombinant colonies and finally the role of insertional inactivation in the selection of recombinant colonies. We will be discussing this topic within 5 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with the definition of selectable marker. Selectable marker is a region or gene sequence of the vector that helps in the selection of recombinant colonies that contains our gene of interest. Let's take an example PBR322 vector for understanding this concept. As you all know, in PBR322, there are two selectable marker regions. The first one is the ampicillin resistance region and the second one is the tetracycline resistance region. This region codes for genes that provide resistance against tetracycline and ampicillin antibiotic respectively. So let me make it more clear. If we are having a bacteria, we are transforming this bacteria with this vector. Then this bacteria is having both this sequence. Therefore, this host bacterium carrying this vector can grow in both ampicillin and tetracycline containing medium. Hope this much is clear. Point number two is the restriction sites are always within this selectable marker regions. As you can see in tetracycline gene sequence, you can see restriction sites for BAMH1 and SAL1. Then in ampicillin resistance gene sequence, you can see restriction sites for PVU1 and PST1. Suppose in this experiment, we are introducing our gene of interest in the tetracycline gene region using BAMH1 restriction enzyme. So we are making a cut using BAMH1 and we are introducing our gene of interest in this region. Upon insertion of this gene, tetracycline gene is no more active. This is called insertional inactivation. Let me repeat once more. Insertional inactivation is the inactivation of a gene upon insertion of our gene of interest. Now tetracycline gene is no more active. Now let us see how insertional inactivation helps in the selection of recombinant colonies. After a recombination experiment, the most difficult part is the selection of recombinant colonies with our gene of interest. At the end of the experiment, we will be having three types of colonies. First one is non-transformed, nothing changed. Second one is transformed with non-recombinant vector. Vector has entered into the host, but unchanged vector. And the third colony is the transformed with recombinant vector or with our gene of interest. So we need to pick up these colonies. So this is the most difficult part. As majority of the colonies will be non-transformed. So this is the vector status of each colonies. In this, the vector is intact without any disruption. Whereas in this, in this case, uh, we have introduced our gene of interest in the tetracycline region. Therefore, this tetracycline region is no more active by insertional inactivation. So now let us select the colonies using different medium. So this is the master plate. And from the master plate, we are making secondary plates using replica plating. So using a velvet surface, we press this region and transfer that into medium containing, maybe tetracycline containing medium and ampicillin containing medium. So that the position of the plates, colonies will be exactly same. So in the case of non-transformed, as it doesn't have the vector, it cannot grow in both tetracycline or ampicillin containing medium. Whereas in the case of transformed with non-recombinant vector, it can grow in both tetracycline containing medium and also in ampicillin containing medium as it is having the genes for resistance which is intact, which is unchanged. Whereas in the case of transformed with recombinant vector or with gene of interest, it can grow in ampicillin containing medium as this region is intact. But it cannot grow in tetracycline containing region as this is inactive by 
insertional inactivation. So this helps in the selection of recombinant colonies. Now we will be comparing the position of colonies. So the one which cannot grow in tetracycline containing medium but which can grow in ampicillin containing medium is a recombinant colony in this experiment. So by comparing these with the master plate it is very easy to pick out the recombinant colonies and further subculturing of the recombinant colonies. Hope things are clear. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforry.com.